everyone. Today we will be talking to Genghis Khan, who is also known as the Universal Ruler. I'm Genghis Khan. So, Genghis, so how was life like for life like for you as a Mongolian no no man? Oh, uh, it was like pretty cool. Like kept on moving place to place. It was pretty uh, pretty awesome. Cool. So how did you become Khan of all the Mongolian tribes? It's pretty easy. You just take over like the other clans because there used to be a lot of clans and we just like took them over. Sweet. How did you change your name from Timujin to Genghis Khan? You just change your name and like it means universal ruler. So yeah. And you took over all the clans? Yeah. So made you a universal ruler. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, let's see, what else is on here? Why were the simple nomadic people able to conquer a more advanced civilization like China? Um, we were able to take over China because, like, we were always on the move. And, um, since we were always on the move, like, we could find the weak spots in the wall. And, yeah. How did flat geography contribute to your success and the success of the Mongolians? Well, since we were always on the move, like, we would go in with, like, horses and we'll just, like, attack the wall on its, like, weak spots. So, like, when it was flat, that's where some, most of the weak spots were in the wall. So it was pretty easy to um, break the wall. Nice. After you conquered China, why did you decide to divide the Mongolia Empire? Um... Oh, we did, I decided to make it into like four empires. How and why was the Mongolian Empire divided? It was divided because it was easier to um, con uh, hold the land, not conquer it again because we already conquered it. It's easier to control the land. Who ruled each part of the Khanate? My grandsons. I don't remember their names because I'm, I'm getting pretty old to see. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Genghis. It was very nice talking to you. You too. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. After the break, we'll be talking to the great, uh, Kubli Khan. Stay tuned, everyone. Hi, everyone, we're back with Kubli Khan. Hi. Hi. So, Kubli, when did you take power of the Mongolian Empire, and what famous dynasty did you occur? I took power of the Mongol Empire in 1260, and I even defeated the Song Dynasty in 1279. Awesome! How did you and your Mongolian officers maintain control of the Chinese government and help rebuild China? Well, I ended the civil service examination system, and I used um, trusted people instead of other people uh, for the government. And I adopted Confucian approaches to the government as well, and I used those within the government, so religious and political, pol pol politics. <laughs> and then um, I also rebuilt China with the Grand Canal, and I also built 135 miles of the Grand Canal to Beijing. I also made changes that helped promote trade and contacts with the rest of the world. Wow, that sounds like a lot. Next question, why did you trust Mongolians and foreigners to help rule China, but not the Chinese themselves? I trusted the Mongols and other foreigners because I thought that since we conquered China, um, I didn't really want the Chinese to be doing the government because they could easily conquer our empire with control. So I decided just to have the other people I trusted and knew. How did you and your Mon Mongol officers help merchant travelers and encourage trade in the Mongol Empire? I helped do that by um, I encouraged trade by having the Silk Roads be able to be open and I made them safer and I let caravans go through them and if there was any banditry or warfare I would close them and so I did that also and we just traded lots of goods along that roads and also ships with the compass that we invented. Yeah. Next question. How did you and the Mongol officers promote greater Chinese foreign contract with the rest of the world? Well, we bought um, different cultures there and the people here, such as Marco Polo and even missionaries and diplomat 
Max came over and um, Marco Polo was a very famous one. He came from Italy and he was here for 17 years and he was a great guy. Last question. What forces led to the fall of the Mongol? Okay, so we wanted to invade Japan because we were very selfish in more land. And so we went to Japan and then it didn't go so well in the storms and other stuff killed us. So then these Chinese people tried to rebel against us and they kind of won since we lost people and yeah, they won in Mongolia. Dying all as you right. died. That's all for today. Nice talking to you. Hi everyone, we're back. And we are here talking to Marco Polo. So, Marco, first question, where do you live and what do you do for a living? I live in Europe and I, um, was, I'm a young person. Next question, how did you travel to China? I traveled to China on the Silk Road to China and with my grandpa, no, my uncle and my father. How did you arrive in China and how long did you stay? Uh, I, arrived, I arrived in China in the year of 1275 and stayed there for about 17 years. Who did you eventually become an assistant to while staying in China? Uh, one of the people you interviewed before, uh, Kublai Khan. I stayed with him and um, I assisted him for a long time. Alright, last question. What were some of the interesting things that you witnessed while in China for 17 years? Well, in China I wrote a book about my adventures. And that was pretty cool. And um, China is a very tough country. Yeah. Nice. Great talking to you. Nice talking to you too. All right. That's the end of all our interviews. Thank you for watching.